Poetry Slam community, if y'all don't know, and we like really thrive on energy. So when I ask some, like when I say someone's coming to the stage, I want you to clap like it's your favorite artist you're ever gonna see in concert. <laughs> so whenever I announce someone that's coming to the stage, give them that kind of applause. So once again, give it up for Tom, everybody. This may come as a shock to many of you, but I was not always this handsome. <laughs> no, read it. Uh, in 1933, I was 10 years old. I'll give you a chance to figure out the math. Now. I was a new kid at St. Matthew's School in Milwaukee, South Side, and uh, I was in, the, I think, third grade, probably for my third year. No. Anyway. <clears throat> Uh, on St. Valentine's Day at the school, we had, it was a Catholic school, and the nuns uh, had uh, the St. Fed, we were allowed to bring Valentine's in. And I remember I got a five, imagine in those days, the depth of the depression, uh, I was able to buy a five pack of Valentine's for two cents. So I had to choose my gals very carefully. <laughs> One gal, of course, was everybody's choice, was the beautiful Betty Jane Hayes. Just gorgeous. Even the nuns were in awe of her. She was just, uh, and she was just great. And uh, the second, of course, was the sultry Patricia Gilbert. And, was, and uh, she was very nice, but John Gordon had her corner. So, anyways, I thought, well, I'll, I'll risk it. So the third one, the third one was uh, Th Thomasine Well, These are actual names, by the way. I hope they're not here. <laughs> Th Thomasina Welsh was a flaming redhead gal who during recess loved to play with, with the games with the boys. All the girls were by themselves on recess. The boys had Thomasina Welsh. And we used to play a game that was called Break the Camel's Back. You ever do that? But you, you line up and you grab a pole the guy, the person behind you guys, and then what happened, you take a running jump, you jump on top and try to get the guy to collapse to the front. I was breaking the camel's back. And Thomasina Welch was part of that. That was, that was thrilling. <laughs> well, my fourth choice was uh, Dolores Pihalski. Uh, now, Dolores was not playing. She was, sort of pretty, but the main attraction for most of us was that she was an early uh, mature. <laughs> uh, of majestic proportions. box that the nun, Sister Mary Giordana, a very sweet lady, a very, very devout, uh, not the stereotypical nun, this is a real sweet nun. Anyway, uh, they had the box up there and you had to drop your valentines in there. And near the end of the day, uh, she would take them out and she'd call out your name and you had to come up, get your valentine. Well, Mary Jane, Betty Jane Hayes, so nobody's surprised, got, uh, first of all, the class is about 40. And I think that they were evenly, pretty much evenly divided boys and girls. But Betty Jane got more than 20, so it means there were some girls that really gave her Valentine as well. And uh, Patricia Gilbert came in very close to a second. And then at the end of the time, uh, they said, now who, for some reason, I don't know, to this day, I don't know why she would do this. She said, now who got the least amount? And this was Ruthie Parkinson, who had adenoidal problems. Always carried a satin handkerchief in her hand. So, anyways, uh, so then, <laughs> so anyway, then we started with the boys, and to nobody's surprise, that we got the boy that got the most was Billy Bilot, that star who later became a really a great football player. He played for Creighton, 
And uh, he was tall, handsome, blonde, good-looking guy. Donald Lavelle was a close second. Lavelle was kind of sly. He was my idol. <laughs> I, I liked his style. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, they all went down the line. I don't remember who was third or fourth. And finally, she said, um, now let's see, who got the least? And somebody said, Jimmy Sweeney. Jimmy Sweeney got up and he said, how many did you get, Jim? Two. So uh, it should have stopped right there, but Jimmy Sweeney, damn his soul, <laughs> said, sister, Tom Sitter didn't get any. That's precisely. I mean, I mean, it, I mean, you know, there's nothing worse than pity. You can hate me, you can detest me, you can ignore me, isolate me, but don't pity me. So anyway, uh, so the day finally after that mantle of of pity was, was lifted from me, I was kind of forgotten about near the end of the day. Sister Marijana Giordano said, oh my goodness, what have we here? She reached into the box, oh, there's a valentine stuck at the bottom of the box. Imagine that. Well, well, let's see who it's for. Oh, it's for Tommy Sitter. Get up here, Tommy. So I had to go up, open it up, and it was signed in very fine Spencerian script, a friend. <laughs> so, Twice, again, the mantle of pity descended upon me. What sodden blanket. And I was ready to die, I was ready to kill. Oh, I was just so angry. So, anyway, I knew that at that point, you know, I was like a lot of Catholics, I believe sincerely that if you punched a priest or a nun, you go straight to hell. I mean, I was a straight shot. Do not pass gold, do not collect $200. Don't even think about stopping the purgatory, you're going straight to hell. But at that time, I thought about punching sister. And I'm glad I didn't, because she's pretty strong. She, she, she'd have with me. But then I thought about Big Mouth Jimmy Sweeney. I, then I used to have dreams. Do you ever wish that you could choose your own dream before you go to sleep at night? I used to have this day daydream about someday I'm going to meet Jimmy. Now Jimmy, if he's still alive today, he's, good, he's 92, like 93 like I am, and he could be in a wheelchair. But I'd like to find him, I'd go down there and I'd like to take him out for a nice walk in his wheelchair. Maybe go down a hill. which ended at a busy intersection and into traffic. Anyway, if anybody knows where Jimmy Swain is, let me know. judge him because y'all have all thought worse things about people. I don't care what nobody thinks. Everyone has had that thought. We're like, oh, if I could just catch that one guy on that one time, I swear I would maybe not push him into an intersection. But you do something. So this is a judgment-free zone. Alright. Let's see what we have here. 